continue to continue on a little bit with our discussion of musical form without going into too much detail because not everybody's a musician and that's fine. Uh, the first act goes from prelude to ensemble to brindisi or toast to a short ensemble then to a beautiful duet then the exit of the chorus and scene and aria. This takes barely 25 minutes, 30 minutes. It's remarkably compact and short, and when it's over, you know the characters. You know them. You're in the city, you know that it's corrupt, and yet in this city is born the flower of intense passion and, I think, longing and the possibility of a great love. Now, in the second scene, which is in the country, and remember that according to the Romantic doctrine, uh, everything that's noble blooms in the country. We become our better selves. Good people live in the country, honest people, and we become that way in the country. Uh, there are two short arias in this act, one by Alfredo, you have to give the tenor an aria, and, uh, and one by his father. Uh, both uh, in this interesting, but this aria is very moving. Uh, I think when I heard uh, Robert Merrill sing this at the Met, it was one of the one of the most strikingly beautiful arias I'd ever heard. Of course, I was only nineteen, so I was very impressed. I, I don't think it's a great aria, but that magnificent voice singing that aria that was really that was really something. When I was a kid. So, in this, there's aria and this enormous, fascinating duet, which is followed by uh, a short, another short duet, an aria, and then uh, very quickly to the end. So in other words, this is a very loosely structured act, which is, is which, who, which structure is dictated by the drama, not by music form. So you really have here very, uh, the dramatist, the music dramatist, working out, working out his formulas in this act. It's, it's just strikingly creative. And everything is absolutely dictated by the emotions of the character. The music is dictated by, and the musical form and the dramatic form comes with the emotions of the character and the character conflict and the desires of the character. Nothing else. Music form is not primary. It, it, it just merely contains the action, the feelings of the character. This is extraordinary in music drama. I, don't, I won't say that it never happened previously, but maybe in little bitty pieces. Here it is, he's taking tremendous risk here. Uh, maybe he's saved by these magnificent melodies, I don't know, at the time. But it's just stunning what he's able to do here. Now the third act here, or some people call it act two, scene two, echoes and mirrors uh, this act to some degree. But you have variations. You have, for example, in here, as Alfredo and Violetta come in at odds with each other in separate times, you have a beautiful ballet, very exciting. Incidentally, it's the story of gypsies. In other words, the story of Carmen is danced. <laughs> so we have a ballet representing an operatic theme within another, within another uh, opera. I love it. I love it, I love it. And remember that in Act one and, and, and act three, you have the city. You have corruption. You have the demi -monde. You have gambling. Uh, you have prostitution. You have uh, out of control drinking. And all the things that will get you in trouble, guys. Okay, so uh, everything builds up to this absolutely fantastic finale which has significant, uh, uh, extraordinary, uh, extraordinary uh, musical motifs. Listen to Violetta's voice in this. She'll lead you through the waves 
of music, the storm of music of this. It's just, it's just wonderful. Now, Act 4 echoes, remember, remember Bohem, remember Carmen? It echoes the first act, but especially, but especially Bohem more than Carmen. And it goes back to the same place, Chez Violetta, uh, and you have a repetition of the prelude beginning the act, and you begin to see musically what it means. It is, it, is, it is a description of Violetta and her mood and her fears and her longing. This goes into the beginning of a scene. Alfredo returns to her, but they both recognize in a duet that it's too late. Germain enters and sees that he misunderstood Violetta here. He thought she, when she says, I'm dying, of a malady, he thought that she meant she was hysterical and was going to die if, if uh, her son, uh, if, if Alf Alf Alfredo Germain left, left her. But she was literally saying, I'm sick to death. I'm going to die. Allow me to be happy a little bit before I die. Now he sees it, and he knows, and he calls himself an old fool, and he apologizes. But it's too late. And as Violetta begins her final uh, con con confession, uh, Verdi uses this calm, uh, solemn death march underneath her magnificent attempts to bring those she's leaving, Violetta's attempts to leave them, to, br to bring those that she's leaving behind together in love. She instructs uh, during this uh, final ensemble uh, uh, Alfredo to find himself uh, another girl and to get together and make a family and be happy as she dies. And uh, she tells she forgives Germain for all his Michigas. And, uh, and she ascends. She makes her final ascent after, after the hell of her descent back into the demi monde from the second act, res res respectability. In other words, the vacillation from the demi monde to the, to the middle class domesticity, back to the demi monde, and finally she ascends to, to heaven. So that's just a little introduction, but I think you'll find if you give this plot a chance, it will enter into your mind and heart and will be there the rest of your life. And it will be a very rich, sweet, experience for you. Thank you.